Yeah, I'll get that love machine. I'm a love machine. I'm not comfortable. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. I got bad hips, dude. So this, this isn't going to work, is it, Pain? Nope. See ya. Hey, guys. Welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. I don't know really how to say this, but this is three parts of a four, maybe five part video series about my metal roofing system that I've been installing. So if you didn't catch the previous parts of this series, the links for those will be in the description below as well as any following videos in this series will be listed there too. So let's pick up where we left off in the last peanut. My butt is, is itching and I'm a lick it. I like licking butt. Can't tell me you never licked no butt before. Peanut, that's inappropriate. <laughs> So you can see how the standing seam works. This is just a snap lock. So it's got a, um, the tongue on it has that little outside groove. And then this, this groove has a piece that gets locked in behind it. So there's no mechanical fasteners that are required to hold this together. Now there are standing seams where you need a special machine that joins these two pieces together. Might be a better option, but you probably have to hire a professional because that tool costs money. So I made sure I had my tape underneath that end here. And then I made sure that, that that bend that I put in it sat up tight onto the um, drip edge, slid it up, and then I just take my body weight and push down on this tongue and groove. You could probably use a rubber mallet. I don't know, it so I'll use my fat ass. Dad, you are fat. You're finally admitting it, tubby. When you're choosing your metal roofing, you can get a variety of different colors. Um, I wanted to go with a neutral color and I wanted to go as light as possible. This lighter color is going to, I don't know what the word is, the sunlight won't be attracted to it, it won't absorb into the house. It's going to help with cooling and heating both in the summer and in the winter. Going with a lighter color has the best uh, benefits. I can't remember what the technical terms are. Also when I'm installing these panels, I started at the back of my trailer. This way when the wind's coming it's not going to get underneath this lip and lift these pieces up. I want the screws to be towards the hitch of the trailer so that when the wind's coming, it's gonna keep these down. It's not gonna lift up on these. So from here, it's pretty much repeating everything I just did. I'm gonna go down there. I'm gonna cut a bunch of pieces to length. I'm gonna put the bend in it. I'm gonna bring them up and then I'm gonna install them. So I'm pretty much done cutting. I just have three more pieces to cut. Yo, chill dog. So I'm just gonna show you real quickly how I was cutting them and what I learned in the process of cutting them. So I'm gonna mark my length, which is 104. My total length is 103, but I need to also add for that bend that I'm putting in the bottom. I'll take a framing square, place it inside of there, put it on my mark, square that across. So I'm gonna mark one inch on top here and one and a quarter. I'll flip this around and I'm gonna mark one inch right there. Those are all the marks I need to make this piece. I'll use my angle grinder again. Now that it's cut to length, I'm going to cut it to the one inch mark. I'm going to make sure I stop before I get all the way down into that corner. And now I'm going to just separate this. I'm going to put the blade right in that corner and bring it to that mark. Now I noticed that when I install these, that this piece is causing a problem. So that inch and a quarter mark, I'm going to cut down on, a, uh, on an angle to this point right here. Now this last one, I want to keep this piece right here. So I need to make a cut coming in right here and a cut right here. Now once that's cut, I can bend this back. Be careful, that's going to be hot. Go figure, right? And now this piece is running down on an angle because of this angle. So I need to cut an angle in it that planes with this plane right here. So I'm just going to go by eye. Now once all my pieces are cut, I'm just going to go back and remove any of the burrs that are created when, uh, when I'm cutting it. I'm going to use my homemade brake, stick it in there and just wiggle, hit it in there, make sure it's all the way in. Now this is uh, one inch deep right here, so I know if I'm pushed all the way in and I'm not hitting these points that I have full depth. I'm gonna place the piece right against the wood here 
so that I have a firm surface. And I'm just going to start my bends. Once it goes, I'm going to bring it away and bring it all the way up. Now, I'm not going to worry about making this perfect on the perfect angle just yet. Once I install this piece and the, the drip edge is underneath here, I'll come back with some hand crimpers and I'll cramp this down more. So I've installed a couple of these sheets already. And one thing I noticed is that this double-sided sticky tape causes problems. So I don't want to expose the other side of that tape just yet. I want to install this piece first and then I'll pull that out. So I place this on the top, so just resting on the groove. I put this piece so it's hanging off an inch so that bottom bend is hanging over. I'll push this section down and then once it's down I can slide it up. And I take the, the rubber side of my hammer and I just set it up all the way. And you could use a rubber mallet to do this but I found that this works fine too. You can hear it click in. Now if I lightly pull up on this piece, I can pull this strip out and I want to stop it right there. When you're putting the screws in, you want to put one screw in every single one of these little cutouts that they've made. And you want to make sure the screw goes perfectly straight. If the screw were to go in on an angle, uh, the screw won't sit down flat and it'll be sticking up. And then when you put this next panel on uh, and you press it down onto it, this head of the the screw is going to poke, it's not going to poke through, but it's going to uh, bend the metal up. So make sure they go in perfectly straight or square to the roof. All right, so I got to do my last piece. I'm going to do it just like I did the other side. Now I don't want to push this down into the, uh, the tongue and groove here because once this thing locks down in there, I couldn't get it off. So it's pretty solid once it goes in. But I'm going to put it roughly where it's got to go. So I'm going to lay this down so it's sitting on top of the um, the groove there, or the tongue, and I'm going to bring it up so it's good where it's got to go side to side, or up and down, and I'm just going to take my pencil, oh, and this stuff is hot, I'm just going to run my pencil down the length of it. This is definitely a two-man job, you know, if you have somebody else that can come give you a hand for this project, this is definitely challenging doing it by myself, but obviously I've done this whole thing by myself, so. Everything can be done by yourself. Okay, ready, go. Let the safety police comment away. So here's my piece, it's got the line on it. I'm just gonna double check it with a chalk line. See how good we're running. Looks pretty decent. Got a little dip in it here, but I'm just gonna go with the red line just in case my pencil wasn't good. This is my third cutting disc that I've used on this project so far. Uh, two dollars and fifty cents each those little things that you don't think of that's them right there so just like that the other side I need to install this now this has got two different colors when you're installing this you want to make sure that that color side is going to be facing out so it's exposed and I believe if memory serves me right you're stupid you can't go by memory we all know this I stick this in here and I measure here three and a quarter. What did I have on the other one? So I know from the outside, if I measure in three and a quarter on the top and bottom, snap a line, that line will represent this inside point right here. So this will get put on just like that. Peanut, are you in the video? I'm not in the video, I'm in the back of the video. Hey guys, did you miss me? Did you miss me? I know you did, I missed me too. I'm a miserable type person. Dad, your audio better be working because otherwise this is useless. God, it's working. Thank God. I was nervous for a second. Okay, can I go and kill the squirrel, please? I want to eat the squirrels. Oh, Penny, you laying down? I'm laying down. I'm fat enough. It's a long day. For shits and giggles, check the center. Checking a couple spots. It looks pretty good to me. When you're installing this stuff, try to go like a six inches to a foot because it'll create air pockets and bubbles that you need to work out. Now last time I put this on, I kind of screwed myself. So I'm gonna try to pull this back. And put it down on there.
So I supported that back side with 2x4 and I know that I need to drill it 2 and 5 8 in there. So I'm going to snap a line and put one about 3 inches in both ends see what we can make work here. We'll do every foot. I'm going to install the rivets. Pre-drilled the hole with an 8 inch drill bit. I remember when I was, shoot, I had to be like 9 or 10, my uncle, Uncle Bob, showed me how to use a rivet gun. And I believe he watches my videos, so thank you, Uncle Bob. I got my last piece, put this in. Now I notice when I'm installing these that a few hits on the points here, on this point, and if there was another one there I could do. Also makes that bend a little bit nicer. Now I'm not sure how you're supposed to uh, fasten this. I'm not sure if the ridge or the uh, rake edge cap will secure it. Uh, to me, I want some extra support here. Uh, you should probably cut some elongated slots in here for it to expand and contract. I don't think it's going to expand and contract that much. I mean, if these pieces were like 20 feet long, then yeah. But I'm just going to take some of the screws that I was using and I'm going to install them every foot. So once I installed all the pieces, I have this edge that I need to take care of. Now if I just take these little crimpers and I just crimp it, it'll neaten this up. I'm being careful not to scratch the, the top surface, but that makes that look a lot neater. You can see the difference, how that's kind of tight and that one's all jaggedy and loose. You can see I did these two already. All right, guys, thanks for watching. In my next video, I'm going to be installing the rake edge and the ridge cap, I think. I think that's what I'm going to be doing. But anyways, if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to ask me a question, you can put it down below. And then if you want, you know, you can support me by clicking up in that top right corner and clicking on that little button and showing me some love. If you can't do that, if you would, share my video to your favorite social media. That'd be great, too. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. That was a horrible outro. Oh, watch, dude. You're sucking at everything you do. Dumbass. I'm sorry I didn't make as much of an appearance in this video. Uh, I just I cannot climb a ladder. <laughs>